Today, we explore what happens if we put Paper Mario into water in Paper Mario the Origami King. And the answer is, it depends. Different things happen depending on which water we're talking about because of how the game was programmed. So today, we'll take a look at all of this and explain why this happens. First, let's head to Sweet Paper Valley. Sweet Paper Valley is supposed to be the last downriver stop. There are normally invisible walls that prevent Mario from entering this water, but if we edit Mario's vertical position, we can get Mario over these invisible walls and into the water. In a past video, we looked at what happens if we hack gravity in Paper Mario the Origami King, where we saw that Mario normally moves downwards until he collides with some floor that stops him from moving further down. In some parts of the game, like over here, the floor beneath the water is real, and this allows Mario to walk around this area, he could jump around this area, and he could continue on to the left. But if Mario goes far enough to the left, he falls off the map, and he respawns back at the entrance to Sweet Paper Valley. And let me walk a bit to the side here, just so you can see what's to the right here, since this isn't an area that you could normally see in the game. I also have another video showing a secret area similar to this, what happens if we continue going down the Eddie River Rapids minigame, and we just end up going into some empty void, basically. Before we take a look at an area without real floor, let me show you another area where the floor works normally as we'd expect it to. Around Autumn Mountain, Mario can normally walk on the ground here, and the ground still works in the same way even when this area has been filled up with water. Paper Mario needs to jump up and breathe air from time to time, just like whales and other mammals. It's pretty cool that these boats have collision detection from below, and jumping into one of these boats from below is similar to what happens if you jump into a question mark block, where Mario gets squished for a moment, even though you can't normally hit these boats from below. If we walk over to the boat that takes us down the Eddy River while we're still underwater, we can press A to check out the boat because the prompt comes up. And the funniest thing about this is that Olivia has the same dialogue from earlier in the game. She says if we could ride in this boat, we could follow the blue streamer, even though the blue streamer has already been removed and the entire game has been completed on this save file already. If we ask Olivia for a hint, she says that the river is back to full strength. Is Olivia glad to be in a river that's back at full strength? Walking underwater can work normally in some parts of the game, but not in every part of the game, and it can be strange what does work and what doesn't work. Look at the ground here by the moat of Princess Peach's castle, for example. It looks like solid ground, and if Mario steps on it, he can walk, jump, hammer, ask for Olivia's hint. Mario can even take a nap underwater here if you wait long enough. But now, let's look at this water near the center of Toad Town here. The ground beneath the water looks exactly the same, but if Mario steps onto it, we can see that this floor is fake. fake. Mario's vertical position keeps going down, and Mario keeps falling lower and lower below the level. Once Mario's vertical position reaches a value of minus 100, he spawns at the border of Whispering Woods and Toad Town. Mario respawns at this spot if you reach a vertical height of minus 100 anywhere in Toad Town. Before we take a look at more fake floor areas, let's take a look at this water mill for a moment. Something interesting about this water mill is that Mario's vertical position normally doesn't change while text boxes are open, but the collision between the water mill and Mario doesn't stop while the text box is open. The result is certainly interesting and perhaps unexpected. Mario keeps moving and being pushed while Olivia's hint dialog box is open. We see the camera follows Mario for a bit as Mario keeps being pushed back, and then eventually the camera stops in this position. If we close this dialog box, Mario starts falling, he falls to a height of minus 100, and once he reaches that height, he's sent back to the respawn area for Toad Town again. We've talked more about text boxes and gravity in a past video that I made. Let's now continue to the left of the water mill, to the left of Toad Town, in this area that we can't normally access by editing Mario's vertical position to jump over these invisible walls so that he could get past them. You might be surprised to find that Mario can land and walk here, even though he can't normally reach this area. These trees don't give you any confetti if you hit them with your hammer, which is similar to a lot of trees in other inaccessible areas of the game. You might have expected that Mario would have been able to land on the ground and walk in the water if he jumped into this water, but there is no collision detection with this floor here, so this floor is again 
fake. If Mario jumps onto this ground, he falls through the level, and once he reaches a height of minus 100, he spawns back at the border of Whispering Woods and Toad Town again. It might seem a bit strange that in a lot of areas with water, it looks like there's solid ground underneath, and sometimes Mario can stand on the solid ground underneath, but sometimes Mario just falls right through the ground because there's no real floor there. Before we leave Toad Town, let me show you one more thing right at the border of the Great Sea, and you might be expecting what happens now. If Mario jumps into the Great Sea, Mario's vertical position will keep decreasing, and he appears back at the spawn location for Toad Town again once he reaches a height of minus 100. I love Shogun Studios. When you're hacking Mario's vertical position in Shogun Studios, it feels like you're playing an Assassin's Creed game. So if we head over to Shogun Studios, Mario can walk along the bottom of the moat here, along with the other cheap cheeps that are in here. It's funny that some other areas had ground that looked just like this, and sometimes Mario can walk on it, and sometimes he can't walk on it. We can lock Mario's vertical position here, and because gravity is still acting on Mario, he looks like he's splashing around, like he's really trying to be a cheap cheap. Or maybe like he's trying to be a Magikarp that wants to fit in with cheap cheeps. Let's head to the Great Sea next, where I made one of the most interesting discoveries that I've ever found in this game. I really, really wanted to test out Crescent Island, especially the middle of the island. When you first arrive at Crescent Island, the island is, well, in the shape of a crescent, and the middle of the island is missing. It looks like it's just water. And what ends up happening, as you progress through the game, a moment later, the rest of the island comes up and the island becomes Full Moon Island. So I wanted to test what happens if we jump in this water before this island becomes Full Moon Island. I wanted to first test what happens if we jump off this side of the island. If you jump off the side of the island, Mario keeps falling and responds at the start of the island, which is probably what's expected at this point. But what about the center? I brought Mario up, ready for him to fall through this water, and when he landed on the water, my eyes nearly popped out of their sockets in disbelief. If Mario swings his hammer here, it doesn't make contact with the floor. It's as if Mario is just swinging his hammer through the air. There's also a check button prompt that pops up where the toad statue normally is. I had to explore the island some more before testing that out. You can run off the island to the left side without any trouble, and there's nothing preventing you from doing so since you can't normally access this area, so there'd be no reason for a developer to put an invisible wall here. This entire missing part of Crescent Island is still floor that you can walk on, but there's just an invisible wall blocking you from accessing it during normal gameplay. When you check the invisible toad statue, the message pops up that says, to collect the three orbs, you must journey to Diamond Island. So in Paper Mario the Origami King, there's ground that Mario can sink through, and there's water that Mario can walk on. Apparently, Paper Mario is Chuck Norris, with his swimming on land and walking on water. There's unfortunately no way to skip transforming this island into Full Moon Island and getting to the chest in a speedrun yet, but I thought this was a really cool find. We'll talk more about speedrunning and game skips later in this video, but first, do you remember this area just past Grand Sappy in the Whispering Woods? Did you ever notice the waterfall in the background here? Well, we can move towards it by editing Mario's position. The camera follows Mario for a bit, but it doesn't get very close because Mario normally isn't meant to access this area. This often happens when exploring out of bounds areas. The camera doesn't zoom in very close, and the camera stays in an area where it normally would stay in areas that you normally can access. If Mario makes it to this waterfall, he could stand in it just fine, and he could also land on some of these nearby rocks if he carefully drops down. Let's head back to Autumn Mountain now for another interesting discovery. I was exploring around Autumn Mountain, looking at some unreachable areas, testing what happens if we go to certain places, seeing if these trees give you confetti if you hit them, when suddenly, I got to a certain point in the water, my screen turned white, and it said, Saving. When the game loaded, Mario was at the Eddie River Rapids minigame. There was an invisible loading zone here at Autumn Mountain that took Mario to the Eddie River Rapids minigame from Autumn Mountain. This seems like it could be a huge speedrunning skip, but there's good news and bad news, and I'll give you the good news first. Remember how every area has a respawn location if you fall out of bounds and you fall far enough below the map? 
If you fall out of bounds anywhere in Autumn Mountain, your spawn location is right in front of these rocks. So if you hold down left after falling out of bounds anywhere in Autumn Mountain, you can end up on top of these rocks. Imagine being able to skip all of the Water of Elemental Temple, all of Chestnut Valley, and almost all of Autumn Mountain. That would be huge for a speedrun that has a current world record of just under 7 hours. But there is bad news. There's small bad news and big bad news. The small bad news is that we can't currently get out of bounds in an area without floor in Autumn Mountain, but that's okay, maybe we'll find a way to get out of bounds and fall to these rocks one day. But the big bad news is that this invisible loading zone didn't work for me when the river was empty, only when the river was already full. So instead of saving about half an hour, it could save at best maybe a few minutes if we can't do this until the river is full. This situation is really similar to my video about the Sun Altar skip to get Captain T owed early. It's not possible yet, but if we could find a way to do it, then it could potentially save huge amounts of time in speedruns of this game. One more interesting thing about Autumn Mountain. If we start a battle while Mario is underwater, the battle takes place as it normally would, and Mario's still underwater after the battle. I hope you enjoyed learning about what happens if we put Paper Mario into water and Paper Mario the Origami King. I have plenty more ideas like this planned for future videos and I have some other videos that people have enjoyed, so make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and you're welcome to check out the rest of my videos. Thank you so much for watching this video, wishing all of you a lovely day, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters, and take care everybody.